we've had lots of questions coming in from coaches in our classes and from our coaching community. And so the theme of today really feels a little bit like dealing with difficult participants uh, or, or clients, so to speak. Um, so the there's lots of different types of difficult or or I, I hate the word difficult. Um, uh, our clients who have various challenges as we go through the coaching process. So exactly what I just said, that word difficult, what does that mean? What does that look like? So let's maybe start by just defining like, what are some of the red flags that we look for in uh, uh, um, clients who might be struggling you know, to, with their coaching process? I am curious about this word difficult as well, difficult clients. So. I know you said that there could be different categories and we're going to explore that in a minute as to what could come up in a coaching session. But one of the things I was curious about, and I'm thinking about this myself, is what would make a client difficult for you, Britt? That's a great question. I think the, the biggest struggle I have with clients is clients... So I'm a writing coach. I should probably start by saying that. So most of my clients are coming to me for writing projects. Um, I have folks who are doing everything from fiction novels to workbooks to dissertations. Um, so I really, you know, I, I see a lot of different types of folks. And I think the most difficult client that I work with um, or, or that I would potentially come across is somebody who doesn't have a passion for the project that they're working on or they're, they're not really invested in it. And so that does make it really hard to craft well-designed actions and things that are gonna help them move towards achieving that goal because they're not truly invested. So that's something, you know, and I think that could relate to other niches as well, right? You know, if, if your client is not invested in their own development, that can make sometimes the coaching process more challenging. So I think that's that's something, you know, that's definitely like the first thing that comes to mind. And I think there's other things, you know, negative personality or, you know, having negativity towards the coaching process. Um, I'm lucky that I haven't run into that at all with folks, but I'm, I'm sure that would also make, make some things more challenging as well. What about you, Raj? What would make a, a client challenging or difficult for you? Yes. Um... I do want to, us to think about, all of us, everyone that's listening as well, that when you think of what makes a difficult client for you, for us also to think about our map of the world and our lens as well. So it's not to say that there's not going to be, I don't like the word difficult either, so challenges or um, even, you know, a lack of connection with a, with a client. You might not be the right coach for them. If I'm thinking about this and looking at it from self-coaching as well, I would encourage anybody who's a coach to also think about the scenario and what might be coming up for you as to what is making this interaction or this engagement difficult, um, be challenging, whatever it is that we want to call it. We'll continue using the word difficult for the sake of the question. Because sometimes we might be bringing ourselves into a scenario as well. And this was some of the things that we explored in the inclusion coaching course. So even if you're thinking somebody's not following through, and I'm going to talk about accountability, whose lens are you looking at the scenario through? And is this something for you that causes discomfort? Perhaps you're working with somebody that you're not used to working with. Perhaps it's very different to what you've done before. Uh, maybe it's triggering some of your own values. So I really do like to do self-coaching first when I look at things from this scenario. Um, but if I'm thinking about answering the question as it is, I would say what would make a difficult coaching client for me is, as you said, somebody who isn't necessarily invested initially. And I use the word initially purposefully because our goal is always to see if we can bring people along with us. And for me in executive coaching, I work with lots of organizations and I'm a coach with a number of different um, institutes, universities, that kind of thing. And when an organization pays for a coaching program and invites the individual onto coaching, 
if it's something that they didn't ask for, you sometimes get clients that show up that are not interested, they're not engaged, they might be fearful as to are they on a coaching program because of performance, for example. So I'm, I'm talking quite a bit here. I want to hear what your thoughts are, Britt. Yeah, I love what you said about that self-coaching. It actually reminds me of um, a client interaction I had um, a few months ago um, where my uh, he, he gives me permission to talk about him in my classes, but he he came to the session saying, you know, I'm going to be a difficult participant today, I think. And I thought, that's an interesting, you know, what are you bringing? Like, exactly like what you just said. So like, he almost did some self-coaching to himself and was like, false about how I would perceive that. So he thought that the way he was approaching his writing work was going to be frustrating for me. And it wasn't. And we were able to have a really good conversation about what have I done that made him feel like I might perceive this problem that he was facing as, um, as a difficult conversation and we had a really good conversation about that and i think it brought us closer together from that coach client perspective so i really love what you were saying there that there's there is a really it is really important to always self-assess first so if you're seeing somebody as difficult um what you know first of all like what we're about to jump into in a minute here is just like what type of difficulty are you facing is it something you can manage or not but if it's more profound than that I love what you said, that lens through which you're looking at it. And I love that you also said, like, I think that's one of the harsh realities, the harsher realities of coaching is not every client is going to be the best fit for you. And so if you're looking at it through a lens that is impossible for you to break away from, the professional thing to do then would be to have a conversation about connecting them potentially with another, another coach that might be more suited or more, more of a fit for them. And that's the best thing that you can do for them in service of their goals. So I love that you said that. 